Let's kick things off. Fox News alert. Today, deadline day for former President Donald Trump to pay his $454 million bond in his New York civil case. That's right. And if he doesn't do it, the state could begin freezing his bank accounts and seizing his assets. Besides that, not much at stake. <laughs> right. Eric Sean is live at the Manhattan courthouse where the former president is also set to appear on an unrelated case, Eric. Yeah, good morning, Brian. Hello, guys. Today is D-Day. Former President Trump supposed to come up with that $454 million bond that his lawyers say they can't get because it is too much money. As you say, we do expect the president to be here at Manhattan Criminal Court later on this morning. That for the Stormy Daniels election interference hush money case. His lawyers want that case thrown out or at least delayed by 90 days. It was supposed to start today, but the judge gave them a month, uh, a month delay because the feds are not turn over about 100,000 pages worth of material dealing with Michael Cohen. But as far as Attorney General Letitia James, she could start attaching some of Mr. Trump's assets today because of that fraud uh, be, being found liable for committing real estate fraud for years. Here's what the former president says on True Social about all that. Quote, Letitia James has a terrible record on violent crime as New York State Attorney General, but at least she goes after Trump for doing absolutely nothing wrong. Well, Judge Arthur and Goran found that President Trump, as well as Trump Organization, did do something wrong, that they falsely inflated the value of their real estate deal for years in order to get better terms on loans. That is why the judge uh, socked him with a $454 million fine that the uh, ill-gotten gains, according to the judge. So what happens today? Well, the attorney general can post deadline, do several things. One, freeze Trump's bank and brokerage accounts, collect rent from Trump's tenants, initiate proceedings to seize Trump's New York properties. The president, though, has uh, some things that he can do. He can appeal, appeal to higher courts, sell the properties to raise funds. He can also seek financial assistance from wealthy supporters. And he's got another ace in the hole. That has to do with uh, his true social site. True Social today will go public, and that can net the former president up to $3 billion, but he can't sell any of that stock for six months unless he gets a waiver. Meanwhile, the attorney general has already filed a, a judgment beginning the process on the Seven Springs estate. That's in Westchester County, so that could be the first property to go. Ironically, Trump Tower may not net her that much because it is a condo. The condo owners own those apartments. The former president's company uh, owns the commercial space. And, of course, the former president has his uh, three-story uh, apartment in that building. Meanwhile, we expect him to be here later on this morning. We'll see how that hearing goes. And as long as this continues, while well, he's even uh, has his appeals ongoing for this, it still costs him about $100,000 a day in interest. So the interest and the payments are racking up. We'll see what happens later here at court when the former president arrives. This is the moment we waited for. Everything you want is right here. We gonna give them what they came for. We gonna take it up from last year. Shoot them a shot, boy, I'm long range. Me and the team on the same thing. Stay down, never switched up. Only thing changed was the game. I'm in the zone now. Let the cash change what we on now. When I pull up, no, it's going. All right, super bass. Okay, that's that's good. I've never seen that clip before. That's a great song. Did Donald Trump drop that track? Let's see, ladies and gentlemen. We are on track for a spectacular show. A lot of news breaking. Trump in court right now this morning, March 25th, 2024. Trump has hours, literally simply hours hours to pay 454 million dollar fine otherwise they will start seizing his properties welcome to venezuela former rnc chair ronna mcromney banned from her her new network after revealing herself to be a fraud we were right we were right we were right we were right great way to start monday kamala harris gets brutally trolled by protesters and her reaction is Ever painful, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Benny Johnson, and this is The Benny Show. Allegiance Gold will make sure that you can stay steady in an insane stock market and an insane crypto market and an insane economy. Some things are going well, some things are going horribly poorly. Did you see the B Boeing CEO just resigned this morning, along with the entire executive board? So the doors are flying off. Boeing Airlines, the wheels are falling off, the bottom's falling out, obviously, on the economy. Have you checked in on, 
I don't know, grocery prices. These I went to McDonald's for the first time in a long time. Don't eat a lot of fast food. Went to the McDonald's and the, I was like, my God, there's no such thing as a dollar, dollar menu ever, anymore. Everything's like 10 bucks at McDonald's. Inflation is out of control. Consider diversifying, invest in gold, ladies and gentlemen. My friends at Allegiance Gold can take care of you. Protectwithbenny.com today. Call 84466-BENNY. Right now, get up to $5,000 in free silver with a qualifying purchase. Don't get fooled by crazy, inflated, overinflated values on the market. Go with gold. Go with gold. Ladies and gentlemen, a solid gold moment from this weekend, which had me screaming through my house, saying, we were right. We were right. We're right. We were right. We were right. And I love it when we were right because we do our best on this program to sort of like muscle in predictions and to tell obviously the truth about what's really happening behind the scenes. And I've spent my entire young life in Washington, DC, and I knew how that city operated. And I knew Ronna McDaniel's staff. I don't know Ronna McDaniel, I've never met her, okay? I don't know her. So it's nothing personal, right? Nothing personal. Ronna McDaniel didn't like, you know, spill a drink on me one time and I got really angry about it. Or like kick my dog. That, that didn't happen. I don't I don't know. I never met her, right? So again, you know I hate Ronna Mc, Ron, McRonnie. But we've spent the better part of the last year on this show just going to work on her, right? Because I have so many friends, sources, people that work with her, alongside her, know what's going on in the RNC. And I, I continue to say she's a she's a, like a rhino fake Republican. She's not real. Ronna McRomney is not real. She's not a Republican. She doesn't have any interest in winning for the Republican Party. She has zero interest in actually accomplishing the goals of the base. And ladies and gentlemen, this weekend, Ronna McRomney confirmed all of it live on air. And it's inc it's remarkable, like a truly like a truly miraculous moment for you and me and for for us who called this from a thousand yards away. And we used the leverage that we had to kick Ronna out of that position. I take a, I take personal pride in walking into a house where Vivek Ron Swamy was getting ready for a debate with NBC News, which Let's just start right here. Ronna McRomney gets fired by Trump. She confirmed that too this weekend. She gets fired by Trump. Thank God for Donald Trump and his family. Replaced by Laura Trump, right? Ronna McRomney. Uh, the first thing she does isn't start a, you know, nonprofit, right? To get ballots for Republicans or to start fundraising for Republican causes or to join the board of, I don't know, the Heritage Foundation or something, whatever, right? Like do something for the Republican Party. Like, ensure the Republican Party continues forward in its work. Look, like, wouldn't that normally be the thing to do? Didn't, didn't she already prove that we were right by the fact that she went running like a rat to the liberal corporate media for a job? Isn't that amazing? Like it's the same thing we've been, it's, 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 like, it's remarkable watching this, watching this play out. It has been like poetry. It's been very ugly, but it's been poetry because everything we predicted has been, has come true. Ronna McRomney is a fraud. She hates the Republican party. She wasn't a Republican as RNC chair. She was simply a corrupt individual who used her position to enrich herself and her friends and to use the RNC as a kitty piggy bank while losing elections, maybe on purpose, who knows? I'll let you decide. But isn't it, isn't it, isn't the proof in the pudding, the fact that Ronna McRomney, upon being fired by Trump, went scurrying to the liberal media. Isn't that remarkable? Doesn't that show you the whole game, that exactly what she was planning on doing the whole time, exactly what she was doing the entire time? I digress, ladies and gentlemen. One of the finest moments uh, on this program is when, we went to Miami for an NBC News debate. Ronna's new employer, NBC News, new employer. She was clearly using the RNC to try and get a plum job at the RNC, at, at, at NBC News or at some liberal media company, right? She was using her position. She was using all of us because we are what makes up the Republican Party. She does not make up the Republican Party. We make up the Republican Party. She was using us. So... We went to that debate and after a day of like talking with, uh, with Vivek and like 
coaching him and he I, I walk in and he's like what are people angry about right now and i'm like rana you should roast rana from the stage you should say resign now come on up here and resign man we called it we called it we knew it we were right and we were able to get this moment ladies and gentlemen in american history uh that i think will go down as the watershed moment that finally broke broke rana's back right this was the moment when vivek got the entire audience at the nbc news debate particularly embarrassing for rana given the fact that she knew she was going to go work there to boo her on stage here we go swami let me turn to you uh, please make your case why would you uh, why should you be the nominee and not the former president I think there's something deeper going on in the Republican Party here, and I am upset about what happened last night. We've become a party of losers at the end of the day. We a cancer in the Republican establishment. Let's speak the truth. I mean, since Ronna McDaniel took over as chairwoman of the RNC in 2017, we have lost 2018, 2020, 2022, no red wave that never came. We got trounced last night in 2023. And I think that we have to have accountability in our party. For that matter, Ron, if you want to come on stage tonight, you want to look the GOP voters in the eye and tell them you resign, I will turn over my, yield my time to you. And frankly, look, the people there are cheering for losing in the Republican Party. Think about who's moderating this debate. This should be Tucker Carlson, Joe Rogan, and Elon Musk. We'd have 10 times the viewership asking questions that GOP primary voters actually care about and bringing more people into our party. You think the Democrats, and we've got Kristen Welker here, you think the Democrats would actually hire Greg Gutfeld to host a Democratic debate? They wouldn't do it. And so the fact of the matter is, I mean, Kristen, I'm going to use this time because this is actually about you in the media and the corrupt media establishment. Ask you the Trump-Russia collusion hoax that you pushed on this network for years. Was that real or was that Hillary Clinton made up disinformation? Answer the question. Go. Mr. Ross. Sorry. This is how we get our country back. We need accountability because this media rigged the 2016 election. They rigged the 2020 election with the Hunter Biden laptop story. Mr. Ramaswamy, and they're going to rig this election. Your time is up. Accountability. Let me turn to That's Governor, Governor Christie. Why? Ooh, baby. The, what? what? <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it would be something that I would love to take credit for and be like, we, like, we did this, but we actually did it together you did this okay so there's two people that deserve like credit for that clip and that's the most viral clip of the entire 2024 cycle so far that w without question that doesn't inc involve donald trump right and it worked rana was fired because of that clip and then humiliated in front of her own network and she was seething about that she was furious raging rana over that clip because vivek went straight at the heart of the problem which was the RNC going to collusion, Russia collusion hoaxers, anti-Trump hoaxers, and giving them a debate instead of Tucker Carlson. Hey, yo, when was the last time Tucker Carlson host moderated a debate? Like, like, why not have Tucker Carlson moderate a debate? Why is NBC hiring Ronna McRomney? Republicans don't like her. Liberals hate her. Like, why, why would you hire this person? Who do you think she represents? She doesn't represent anyone. She represents herself, and that, and that that ultimately, ladies and gentlemen, is the problem. The real credit for that clip, the real credit for all that lies with you. Why? Because you tell me that you hate Ron and McRomney, and you hate the RNC and what they're doing, and you feel betrayed by them, and you feel like they're the party, the uniparty and party of the elites. And so we take that into our circles, and Vivek also deserves the credit. He's the guy who listened. Yo, we talk about this all the time, day and night, on our program, okay? So Vivek is one of the first guys to like call us up and listen. He and I are about the same age. Maybe that helps. And and then he, he delivered it on stage. Whew, baby, man. And it worked. So Ronna McRomney gets fired and she confirmed that on her first hit on NBC uh, morning show, the NBC Sunday morning show. She was trotted out there in spite of NBC's like being on fire, set ablaze, right? While she was walking out, by the way, and NBC's subsidiary, MSNBC, banned her for life from appearing on their airwaves. There's like a whole revolt going on inside of NBC News over the hiring of Rana, which is great. First time, I'm like, yep, go for it, go for it. 
I agree with you. We agree for different reasons, but I agree with you. Ronna McRomney should not be hired there. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronna, first thing she does is admit, yep, it was Donald Trump who said, you're gone. You're fired. Go. Let's dive right into this and start with your decision to step down as RNC chair. If you can, take me behind the scenes a little bit. Were you pushed out of your role? Well, there's no question that as RNC chair, you have to remain neutral. And we had a primary process. And so we did have debates, right? We had debates and there was tension and a little friction that started during that process. It was well played out in the media. And I knew at that point when I was doing that role and we were going to have debates that when the nominee came forward and it was likely to be President Trump, that they would want to switch. And that's his right as nominee. And, and so were you pushed out by him? He, he absolutely wanted me to, to move aside and wanted Michael Watley and Lara Trump to come in. So good. Thank you, Donald Trump. So again, like this is a movement. We're all building it together. But Ronna McRomney getting booed at her own debate by her own donors, that's pretty sound proof that you shouldn't be the RNC chairwoman. And also, what's all a sound proof that you shouldn't be RNC chairwoman is when you admit you're not a Republican. When you admit it was all fake, which is the final point that we wish to make here. We don't want to spend the entire show on this, but like it's totally worth spending a second uh, on this program and recognizing the power that we have and that your instincts are right and your instincts are God-given and they go down into your core, into your DNA. And for years, I read the comments on this program. I'm reading them right now. For years, we, so you can put up some Rana, pop up some Rana comments, but please, because this, this audience is correct. You have such great gut instincts, okay? You have such great instincts. Because for years, this audience told me you hated Ronna McRomney and that you despised her, ladies and gentlemen, and that you knew she was fake. And your instincts were proven right, not because we said so, but because Ronna McDaniel admitted it this weekend. Ronna McRomney was asked, I'm working, I'm working on, not McDaniel, McRomney, okay? Ronna McRomney was asked live on TV about a policy issue that virtually all Republicans agree upon, which is that there are insane third world political prosecutions going on for nonviolent, peaceful protesters during January 6th. And that they've never treated anyone from Antifa like this, and they've never treated anyone from BLM like this. Yet here we are, ladies and gentlemen, and that the J6 political prisoners should be set free. As I've always said on this program, if if you punched a cop, right, or if you were a hooligan, then you you can't do that, right? You will suffer punishment and consequences, and I will not defend you. But if you if the cops open up the door to the Capitol building and you like wander through with a little 25 cent American flag, then there needs to be some give in the joints there, right? Ronna McRomney, when asked about this issue, said not only should no J6 political prisoners go free, okay, which is like, whoa, like actually extreme when it comes to people who've been paying attention on the right. You are RNC chair. She was asked about this and she goes, actually, how, I can't do her accent. I can't do, it's like a Northern Michigan, like real, uh, like it's, oh, it's just such an obnoxious accent. But, and I, I apologize if you're from Northern Michigan. I love nothing but love for me, but like, I can't do it. She's like, actually, I've never been a Republican. Actually, as RNC chair, I had to like represent everyone, okay? And do a bunch of stuff I didn't like. Now I can be myself. What does that mean? That means you're a liberal and you were fake. You were faking being a Republican. Listen to her say it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you if you were to ask me a couple weeks ago about Ronna McRomney, I would have said this, but now she's just straight up admitting it. And so the truth shall set you free. Let's go. All right, well, let's talk about the election now. Donald Trump says one of his first acts, if he is reelected to a second term, would be, quote, to free those charged and convicted of crimes related to January 6th. Do you support that? I want to be very clear. The violence that happened on January 6th 
is unacceptable. It doesn't represent our country. It certainly does not represent my party. We should not be attacking the Capitol. We should not be having violence. I said it that day. I put a statement out that day that this is not acceptable. If you attacked our Capitol and you have been have you and you've been convicted, then that should stay. So then, but to the question though, do you disagree with Trump saying he's going to free those who've been charged? I do convicted? not think people who committed violent acts on January 6th should be freed. So you disagree with that? He's been saying that for months. I, Rana, why not speak out earlier? Why just speak out about that now? When you're the RNC chair, you, you kind of take one for the whole team, right? Now I get to be a little bit more myself, right? This is what I believe. I don't think violence should be in our political discourse, Republican or Democrat. And I disagree with that. I agree with him on a whole host of other things. Let's close the border. Let's make sure we have good incomes for people. Let's make sure we do a lot of great things. But on that point, I don't think we should be freeing people who violently attacked Capitol Hill police officers and, and, and attacked the Capitol. So Ron Romney saying, I lied. I've lied. The entire time, I was just playing a part. I don't believe any of this. Now I can be myself. Now I get to be me, which is a Romney and a, a family whose entire legacy is grifting off of the Republican Party, losing races, costing us seats and using the Republican Party to enrich themselves and to get famous by doing nothing for the base. They're vultures, these people, vultures. And so R R Ron Romney is doing exactly what everyone in her family has always done, all of her uncles and all of her grandfathers and all these people, they've always done this and it's time for this cancer uh, to be cut out of the Republican Party. What's amazing, by the way, is that I'm in agreement with Chuck Todd, who's the uh, host of Meet the Press, the former host of Meet the Press, who was on right after Rana and just went on a on a like scorched earth tirade against the bosses at NBC News and Rana. OK, and I, I don't want to belabor the point here. Uh, I just want to prove I, I you know, I want to prove something. You were right. It's why the show exists. It's why we love you so much. It's why we do the show. And it's why we're like building as f like animals around here. It's why we're building as fast as possible. Cause like your instincts are correct. You were right about Rana the entire time. And we read the comments and we like felt the energy from the audience. And I don't know, maybe we're the only show that does this. We like felt the energy and we like, we like brought that energy to power, to the halls of power, speaking truth to power is really important. And so like, don't think for a second that like your comment doesn't mean anything. Or don't think for a second that like you tuning in means nothing to us. Are you kidding me? Like we love, we love, we love you. We love this audience and we're here to hustle and grind and we'll listen to you. And then sometimes we can have like a really huge outsour outsized positive effect on the country. Like getting Rana fired because you called her out as a fraud and a fake. And now not even the liberal media can like justify her hiring. Chuck Todd straight up being like, why the hell did we hire this person? Uh, shame on all of our bosses at NBC News for putting you, Kristen Welker, in this position. I'm, I've never seen anything like it. Check this out. Let me deal with the elephant in the room. Yeah. I think our bosses owe you an apology for putting you in this situation because I don't know what to believe. She is now a paid contributor by NBC News. So I have no idea whether any answer she gave to you was because she didn't want to mess up her contract. Um, she wants us to believe that she was speaking for the RNC when the RNC was paying for it. So she has, she has credibility issues that she still has to deal with. Yeah. Is she speaking for herself or is she speaking on behalf of who's paying her? What, once at the RNC, she did say that, hey, I'm speaking for the party. I get that, that's part of the job. So what about here? I, I will say this, I think your interview uh, did a good job of exposing, I think, many of the contradictions. And look, there's a reason why there's a lot of journalists at NBC News uncomfortable with this, because many of our professional dealings with the RNC over the last six years have been met with gaslighting, mm. have been met with character assassination. So it is, it, you know, that's where you begin here. And so um, 
when NBC made the decision to give her NBC News' credibility, you gotta ask yourself, what does she bring NBC News? Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt the show to tell you some breaking news right now. I'm the breaking news. Is that too loud? <laughs> is it too loud? Or is it is it like okay? Is it too, is that is that breaking news clip too loud? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we uh we we like break in to tell you some very good news. Uh should we give this a hallelujah? I'm not exactly sure, but the New York fraud trial bond that was supposed to bankrupt Donald Trump has been lowered by a by an extraordinary amount. It's still 175 million, which is a, 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 a huge amount of money. Um, but there's a partial stay now on the 11th hour. Still a disgrace, says Charlie Kirk. Let's go ahead and look over at the uh, breaking news here, the New York Times. Trump can post smaller bond in civil fraud case court rules and doesn't have to have his properties seized from him. Former president must post a bond of $175 million within 10 days as he appeals the $454 million judgment against him. Um, and the way the system works is Donald Trump is appealing. Donald Trump, all signs show that Donald Trump will win this on appeal, that this is insane policy, but the appeals process takes a very long time in the American system, sometimes years. And there's a lot of details in this case, and so Donald Trump's going to have to post something in order to like keep it moving and to not have New York, the state of New York, the Marxists in New York come in and seize his assets. And so this is breaking second, literally seconds ago. Donald Trump will now be able to, it's still unjustifiable, will now be able to post a smaller uh, bond, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this was a very important sort of context setting by Charlie earlier uh, today about this, and we're gonna cover this on the program because Donald Trump is, is on trial in New York this morning. He's in the courtroom right now. Bernie Madoff had a $10 million bond for orchestrating the largest Ponzi scheme in history, defrauding 40,000 investors of billions. Sam Bankman fraud, $250 million bond for defrauding thousands of crypto investors out of billions of dollars to finance donations to Democrats and anti-Trump Republicans. Donald Trump had t nearly double the amount of a bond set for paying all of his loans. The bank he defrauded testified in his defense and said that they would love to do business with Trump again. There were no victims at all. Nobody lost a penny. Nobody lost anything. Donald Trump built the New York skyline. This is the most Soviet style injustice ever perpetrated in American history, and it's not even close. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that's a, that, that sets some really, really good contact, but it's some really important breaking news, obviously, uh, for the program to sort of couch in like where, where we're heading here, which is Donald Trump back in court. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, Ronna McRomney, obviously we dance, uh, look, we're spiking the football here. Look, we just want to close that chapter. Super embarrassing, uh, for her. Now she's been banned. She's been banned from the N MSNBC network. I guess you can still go on NBC. But again, the final issue is why? Why? This is the issue that Chuck Todd was talking about before our breaking news segment. Why would you even hire this person? Who does she represent? Does Ronna McRomney represent you? Does she represent us? Are you hiring her to get insight into how Republicans think? Why? She doesn't represent us. And the people who voted for her to be RNC chair, and there's only 168 people I get to vote for the RNC chair, 168 people. Those people should resign in disgrace. They should be totally and completely and utterly ashamed of themselves. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, Donald Trump is in, is in court right now. Eric Trump was on this weekend talking about this, uh, explaining that this is obviously election interference. Even though Trump does have the cash for the bond, apparently Trump does have this money. And Trump also just got a, may get a multi-billion dollar payout for the Truth Social merger. So we'll see, that went forward. So the sun is sun is shining on Donald Trump's shoulders, right? When the guy needs a couple hundred million dollars, he gets $3 billion from his social media company, uh, massive merger that was approved uh, this weekend. So. 
Well, just in time. Apparently, Trump had the cash on hand for the $500 million payment, so he will definitely have the cash on hand for this smaller payment, and hopefully he'll, he'll get it all back and an appeals court reversal. Here we go. As the clock winds down for former President Donald Trump to secure a bond for nearly half a billion dollars, Trump tells Fox he has nearly $500 million in cash and properties driving loads of money, but added, quote, that doesn't mean I'm going to give money to a rogue and incompetent judge, the puppet of a corrupt attorney general, end quote. Trump's comments come after his legal team told the court earlier this week it's been, quote, impossible for Trump to post a $454 million bond while Trump appeals a civil fraud judgment against him. Trump has asked the court to waive the bond or reduce it. The court hasn't ruled on his request, but the New York Attorney General's office has argued Trump didn't explore every option. A former Elections Commission member tells Fox this case will hurt New York's business prospects. Of course it's going to hurt New York's business prospects. Donald Trump on Truth Social talking about how he has the money. But of course, do you understand even like how business works? Does anybody, no, of course not, of course, of course not. This is what happens when you have a political class of parasites, a parasitic political class. These people have never built anything, never created a business. Running a business is excruciatingly hard. Making a profit is excruciatingly hard here in Biden's America. So what gives? Uh, well, what's happening here is they have a total and complete misunderstanding of how real estate business works. Real estate business works is if you want to get a loan, you, you can't just sell all your buildings. You have to assume the, the values of the buildings. This morning, the New York, this morning, the New York Times was out with a report about how the state of New York doesn't know which assets to seize of Donald Trump's because they're not sure what the values are because the values are a moving target. Donald Trump's, the entire trial was about Donald Trump valuing his properties because and, and the disagreements about those values. That's just how it works. You'll never know the actual value of a property until you sell it. And, and of course, nobody is just sitting around with all the money sitting in a bank account. All of the money gets reinvested. You can go watch It's a Wonderful Life movie that was made 100 years ago. To go learn about this. Like all the money gets in, gets poured and driven and buried into other properties and ventures. That's how money works. That's how money is liquid. Nobody's sitting around with a Scrooge McDuck vault of gold coins. So ladies and gentlemen, like the, this entire trial is obviously specious. It's insane Marxist overreach in New York. It's going to have a very, very bad consequence for the state of New York. There have been some very, very interesting commentary on this. The best, though, is from Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful uh, of Shark Tank fame, going on CNN and saying, uh, hey, listen, you jackals, do you understand this isn't about Trump? This is about America. And if you continue to do this to business owners in America, uh, as a business owner in America, then people will flee because no businesses want to invest inside of a communist Marxist hellhole where everything can just be stolen from you. Right? An amazing moment on CNN with Kevin O'Leary just absolutely dropping bombs. God bless this man. I don't think this case is about Trump anymore. I think this case is about New York. It's about the American brand. It's about what we promised the world in terms of fairness and justice and investing capital in a country that's built the largest economy on earth. Forfeiture, seizing of assets. Is that in our nomenclature in America? Is that what we tell people that want to bring their money here and protect property rights? Forget about Trump. Nothing to do with Trump. You think this is good for business in New York? You think this is good for business in America to take a law that we use to protect people against buying refrigerators at an overpriced value decades ago and apply it against an individual and then talk about seizing assets like he was in Venezuela? Hmm. or in Cuba, this is well, a ask... very, very, very bad look for New York. And everybody around the world is watching this. This may be well, great for the attorney general, but this is I not good you. for America. But in terms of the valuation, can you be clear as to why? I mean, why would the properties not be sufficient collateral? What a great message to send out all around the world. Take a claim where there was no monies lost, 
a fr it, there was no there was no fraud here in the context of actually people losing money. Deutsche Bank, who made the loan, was made whole. And let's make a penalty of half a billion dollars against a, a, a crime, apparently, where no monies were lost. Great message for New York. Great message for America. Bring your capital because we'll protect your property. I think that was a statement that would be much better made sometime in Venezuela. I'm not kidding. That's a scary, scary message. And by the way, there are uh, again, no such thing as half a billion dollar bonds. The marketplace. There are no half a billion dollar bonds. Never been done before. Never. This law has never been applied. Forget about Trump. Nothing to do with Trump. Everything to do about America and the New York brand. See? So, ladies and gentlemen, Kevin O'Leary is a legend. I'm like sitting there. I'm like sitting there texting our producers. Like, we got to have Kevin O'Leary on the program. This guy is a G. Like, this guy rules. What? Like, what? Like, what a dude. We got to have this. We got to have this guy in the show. Like, he went in there into the lion's den in that witch's kitchen. I don't know who those people are. I, I quite literally, I watch. We watch a lot of cable TV on this program because we have to for work. And we have to see what's actually going on. And we have to like see the, the narrative sort of get created in real time and report back to you. I don't even know who those two people were. So I don't know the names of those hosts, but they're like scowling and hissing and saying, these are the rules. Yeah, well, what about when the rules are broken? What about the rules are wrong? There have been pretty much in every era of American history, there have been rules and laws on the books that aren't correct. And the implementation of those laws have been evil and have been used to benefit evil people. That's all of American history. You think we're just suddenly living in this like premier zenith where everything is perfect and where all of this is happening in a vacuum? This is like the world, this is the world they wish to break your mind. The like libs live inside of a world, uh, inside of a state where their minds are broken and they have suspended reality, right? Eric Trump was going ham on this. This is very, very good news, ladies and gentlemen. Eric Trump going ham this weekend, saying obviously what's actually at play here is they are weaponizing the law against Donald Trump in order to break the bank account so he can't run for president. Everything else has failed, and so now they're going to go at Trump. I mean, I'm telling you, you you want Trump for life? Keep doing this. What Donald Trump was losing pretty badly to Joe Biden in the polls at about in about the year 2022. And these bastards can't help it themselves. They can't help themselves. Just like every Marxist in history, they're going to overstep. They're going to use their power for evil. And they're they can't stand the fact that Donald Trump just exists. That the person that stay, that the person that humiliated them still is around and alive and breathing and successful and more powerful than ever. If they had not gone this route, I tr I like I truly believe that Donald Trump would not be up in the polls the way he is right now. Donald Trump is up in the polls in a commanding and dominant way, and many polls show that if they actually are able to convict Donald Trump on these things, that Donald Trump will go up even more. So I guess thanks, dumbasses. Ladies and gentlemen, Eric Trump. So the first question, of course, is how are you dealing with this? What is your plan to meet this judgment? Yeah. Well, it's so sad. First of all, I'm a guy that grew up in New York. My father built a skyline of New York, and this is an election interference. And they go out and they ask you to post a half a billion dollar bond. Maria, I want to put that in context. I went out to the largest sureties in the world, the largest sureties in the country. They said, Eric, the last time we've seen a bond of that size is when we did the big dig in Boston, which was a $25 billion construction project that lasted almost 25 years. They're trying to put my father out of business. They're trying to take all his resources that he would otherwise put into his own campaign for, for presidency. This is New York State. This is what we're seeing. Letitia James campaigned on this promise, and now they're, they're making him do something that's not physically possible. Putting up a half a billion dollar bond, bonds that size don't exist in this country. A $10 million bond is a large bond. A $15 million bond is an enormous bond. A half a billion dollar bond? And Maria, remember one thing, the banks all testified Trump was the greatest borrower we've ever had. I mean, there, there was no victim. There's, 
This is a crooked system with a crooked attorney general in a crooked court that literally wants to put my father out of business. And, and you know who they're actually going to hurt? They're going to hurt the thousands and thousands of employees that we have in New York State. These are janitors. These are doormen. These are you know, people that work in commercial buildings. They're going to hurt those individuals, not, not the executive. They're going to hurt those individuals. How about all the contractors that we employ to do build outs? How about you know, everybody else that relies on our family, thousands of people, yeah. all for their own political vendetta? I, I, it's I'm insane. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have um, some more breaking news. Donald Trump in court right now in New York for a totally different fraud. This is the Alvin Bragg, George Soros, district attorney. Man, that is money well spent. George Soros can spend like pennies on district attorney's races all around the country and get and get cases like this. The point of the case is to obviously keep Donald Trump off the campaign trail and to liquidate his cash reserves. This is lawfare. It's Marxist lawfare. This is how it's done in Venezuela. As Kevin O'Leary says, Donald Trump in court just a moment ago uh, went went into the court um, in, in the Southern District of New York. The case brought by Alvin Bragg alleges that Trump misused campaign funds to pay hush money to Stormy Daniels. The reason why this is so curious is because the DOJ, who oversees elections, the FBI, who oversees elections, the SEC, who oversees payments like this, the FEC, not SEC, the FEC, Federal Elections Commission, is that acronym broken out? These people said Donald Trump did nothing wrong. This is their damn jobs. They're the ones who actually have oversight here. Yet because the payment happened in New York, Alvin Bragg is putting together some type of like duct tape and dental floss and toilet paper argument that Donald Trump is guilty of a campaign finance violation. First off, it, it like doesn't fall to district attorneys to run campaign finance. This is something that was obviously shopped around. No federal agency would bring it because Donald Trump was running for federal office. So they went to the district attorney, Alvin Bragg, with another Trump hating judge in dark blue downtown Manhattan. Get the hell out of liberal cities, ladies and gentlemen. Here's Trump entering the courtroom moments ago. Thank you very much, everybody. Are you getting a bond This is a witch hunt. It's a hoax. Thank you. So Donald Trump saying this is a hoax and it is a witch hunt. Every time they do this to Donald Trump, his poll numbers go up. Trump's poll numbers only go up. Again and again and again, they are going to prove that this system of going after your political opponents like this doesn't work in America. But maybe Republicans should try it. I mean, have Republicans ever considered like prosecuting or going after any of the damned criminals and predators on the Democrat side? Boy, it'd be sure nice to unseal some of the Epstein documents, more Epstein documents. Man, Bill Clinton's literally named the Epstein documents like dozens of times. The little girls on Epstein's island said that they were having dinner with Bill Clinton. He was being taken off into all these mysterious little rooms. That's their testimony. These are the girls who were trafficked by Epstein. Placing Bill Clinton on the island, Bill Clinton on the manifest. Nothing? No investigations? Nothing? Nothing, huh? Nothing. This is Donald Trump from moments ago at his trial. This is a photo from moments ago, looking kind of like the mugshot, kind of like the mugshot look. Got Donald Trump, kind of very, kind of similar to mugshot look. Yeah, you see that same suit and everything. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Speaking of that mugshot, we have Fannie Willis news. Ooh, yes, big Fanny decided that she's gonna start talking smack. Now, this is Big Fanny coming off a humiliating and disgraceful uh, disqualification hearing that actually resulted in a disqualification just of Nathan Wade. The judge split baby justice, right? And therefore killed baby justice, sadly. 
But nonetheless, the judge then approved of the Trump team appealing his ruling. The judge effectively punted here, right? Scott McAfee, these judges are elected. So it was actually a relatively successful, all, all things considered on the merits, relatively successful case brought against Fannie Willis. Now Fannie Willis is talking smack, baby. Oh yeah, Fannie Willis is saying, yo, the train is a coming. Isn't that interesting? DA Fannie Willis warns Trump, the train is coming as she doubles down on claims of her illicit affair with prosecutor who resigned and has not slowed the case and she is not embarrassed by anything. Well, again, we know that people like Fannie Willis lack the capacity for introspection and embarrassment. Fannie Willis, let me explain to you, you are an embarrassment. We can actually prove that on this program. You don't know how to put your dresses on correctly. Your American flag pins are upside down. You're a raving lunatic who like screams at the top of your lungs and like throws papers and gets your team disqualified from cases. It's an embarrassment. But again, people like Fannie Willis, they're, the, they're this specific type of people. You hear about them a lot in the Bible. Specific type of people that are literally incapable of seeing their own flaws. The hubris. Here we go. Big Fanny says a big old train is coming for Donald Trump. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the Fanny train versus the Trump train on the tracks. Jerry, I think that'll be a good meme. Let's work, let's work on that meme. Train versus train. Let's go. All while that was going on, we were writing responsive briefs. We were still doing the case in the way that it needed to be done. Um, I don't feel like we've been slowed down at all. Um, I do think that there are efforts to slow down this train, but the train is coming. Okay. All right. The train is coming. Very interesting way to phrase that, considering the fact that Fannie Willis loves double entendres, talking about emasculating black men in court, getting into like nearly getting into fist fights with people on the prosecution. We look forward to what happens next here. We'll be very sad when we have no more big Fanny news, but we plead obviously with the Republicans in the state of Georgia. Why the hell is this happening? Republicans have super majorities in both chambers and the governor, the governorship. Why are you allowing this to continue? This is as damaging, obviously, as what's happening in New York. The people who should be embarrassed, obviously, are Fannie Willis, who's facing a myriad of big time charges and potentially uh, a censure in, in, in Congress. I mean, Jim Jordan is talking about how he's going to like hold her in contempt of Congress and then demand her arrest. Jim Jordan say that this weekend because she hasn't responded to Jim Jordan's subpoenas. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. You know my thoughts on the Republicans in Congress. Yeah, we'll wait and see. Fannie Willis apparently is not embarrassed, though. If there's anybody who's acted righteously and justly, it's homewrecker Fannie. I don't feel like my reputation needs to be reclaimed. Let's say it for the record. I'm not embarrassed by anything I've done. Um, you know, I guess my greatest crime is I had a relationship with a man, but that's not something that I find embarrassing in any way. Um, and I know that I have not done anything that's illegal. Oh. Okay, well, she's lied to the court. We've proven that time and time again. She's lied demonstrably, obviously, uh, inside of the same court with the same judge that she's going to try and bring this trial with. She was with, not with a man, she was a married man, a guy who had a wife, who's cheating on his wife with you. And then Fannie Willis has the audacity to go scurry to the pulpit of the church and to robe herself in some type of glory, not sure exactly what that is. Careful, careful about the careful about lightning bolts on the on the pulpit, Big Fanny. Like, be careful, man. There's only, there's only so much of that. God will not be mocked. Be very cautious. God will not be mocked. Lord, I am a sinner, and I am in need of forgiveness. Is what you need to hear in these situations. Not, I'm super proud of it, and the train's coming. Mm -mm -mm -mm. At the very least, we'll ha continue to have Donald Trump jokes about Big Fanny. Uh, Donald Trump is taking uh, his his sharpest rock on tour, his, his, his ability to humiliate and his ability to embarrass the people who are coming after him. And he's taking that to the campaign trail. 
uh, Donald Trump on Nathan Wade and Fannie Willis and a brand new hand motion. Let's go. I was indicted by Fannie in Georgia. Fannie. How did that work out? And her lover, Nathan Wade. And they hired him for almost a million dollars because of his great, great experience. Of course, he didn't have any experience. He had experience in something else. You know that. A lot of experience. And at that, I'm quite sure he was very good based on the fact that she called him 2,000 times. I didn't know the gentleman. I didn't know him. Oh, you have 2,000 phone calls, 3,500 text messages. How is it possible in a short... I know a lot of people. We like a lot of people. I happen to have a very good relationship with a woman called Melania. But I would venture to say in all the years that I've known her, I might not have called her 2,500 times. That's all. I know I didn't send 3,500 text messages. You can send 3,000 text messages to me, Donald. Don't you worry. I'll, I'll, I'll give you my number. Donald Trump may, doing what, of course, Donald Trump does best, which is ridiculing his enemies. Donald Trump just spoke at the courthouse uh, in New York and just released a statement. This is a statement that is much longer than what he said going into the court. Again, this is for, it's hard to keep them, it's hard to keep them straight here. This is for the Alvin Bragg campaign funds uh, case. George Soros prosecutor going after Donald Trump for a federal issue inside of a district court. How that's possible, I don't know. Why a city DA, why that falls under the city DA's purview, I don't know. When every federal agency said this is non-prosecutable, Alvin Bragg saying otherwise. Donald Trump is talking about this, and let's see if he talks about the bond that has been adjusted uh, to a much lower number still egregious um and hear what the president has to say this literally happened seconds ago thank you very much judge ed gorin has done a terrible disservice to the state of new york what he's done is terrible businesses are fleeing and you see that we just released a statement on truth Businesses are fleeing and crime is flourishing all over the state. And what he's done is such a disservice and should never be allowed to happen again. New York State is being battered by his decision. So I greatly respect the decision of the appellate division and I'll post either $175 million in cash or bonds or security or whatever is necessary uh, very quickly within the 10 days. And I thank the appellate division for acting quickly. But Judge Angoran is a disgrace to this country, and this should not be allowed to happen. Thank you very much. Would you accept more money to pay the bond? All right, so ladies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, breaking news there. Donald Trump saying he will post the bond. It'll be either in cash or securities or however it works uh, from a business perspective, and that he it, that there will not be seizures of his buildings by the Marxists in New York. Now, forgive the gallows humor here, but I kind of wish they did. I kind of wish they did. I kind of wish Trump just like flipped the middle finger to them and said, "Start seizing my property. Go for it. Let's let's show the American people who you really are. Go for it. Go." So, ladies and gentlemen, this is a massive, massive breaking news day for Donald Trump. Uh, Donald Trump saying he's going to post that bond. Obviously, he gets the bond back, right? It's just something to hold till appeal, how this works, right? So something to tell to, to tell the, the court that you're good for it while you're appealing, right? So you don't cut and run. Obviously, Donald Trump couldn't cut and run anywhere, right? He's got 70 secret service agents around him everywhere he goes. Uh, but th that also leads to the insanity of the case and the entire thing, a total and complete embarrassment, ladies and gentlemen. So speaking of embarrassments, Kamala Harris, your uh, vice president was in Puerto Rico this weekend. 
there was a uh, humiliating moment where Kamala Harris clapped alongside a bunch of people that were chanting how much they hate her. Oh, yes. This is what happens when you have uh, an IQ of like a like a room temperature, right? Like a hovering around like 70, like a comfortable room, right? 70, 68. This is what happens. You like, you hear music and you clap and Kamala Harris was clapping and she didn't realize what they were saying. What the people were saying was that they hate Kamala Harris and they want her out of Puerto Rico. It's incredible. Check this out. We want you to know, Kamala, what did you come to do? We want you to know, Kamala, what is going to happen? The song goes on to say that they want Kamala to leave, that she is a ruthless leader, that they want statehood, they want her to fix Haiti, and they want Kamala Harris to actually close the border. Like, th this is incredible. This is incredible. And Kamala Harris like, that's the face. <laughs> Dude, this is not a poster for Joker 2. This is actually Kamala Harris's real face. I can't say human face because I'm not exactly sure. Ladies and gentlemen, li lizard people and skin suits and all that. But here's Kamala Harris's, whatever you could call this. Uh, this is the moment she realizes that she's clapping along with a song saying F you Kamala. Amazing. I mean, truly, truly a, a, a wonderful moment. Uh, there is this, there is this one thing I, I got to play. It's this time when Kamala Harris went walking into a room. Do we have this, Danny? Well, Kamala Harris goes walking into a room and she had a George, uh, a Jeb Bush moment. Please clap. There was like a please clap Kamala Harris moment. Do we have that? Oh, it's so, oh, it's so, so, so very good. It's worth, it's worth, it's worth it. Ladies and gentlemen, trust me. It's, it's worth it. Uh, Kamala Harris was called a war criminal also in Puerto Rico. San Juan residents held up massive posters with messages saying like, Kamala Harris is a war criminal. Isn't that interesting, ladies and gentlemen? There you go. Look at that. Very accurate image of Kamala Harris. There. All right, Royce, get that loaded. Come on, buddy. Buddy! Rolls Royce is fast, baby. He's fast. He's fast just like a Rolls Royce. Uh, so yeah, great, great day. Great day with our, uh, great day with all of our leaders. Uh, and the final... The final thing, ladies and gentlemen, Kamala Harris's please clap moment. We don't play this clip enough. Uh, here you go. Stan, as she enters the room. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello. You can clap. It's okay. <laughs> That's pretty good, Jerry. Why don't we do a face swap? Let's do a face swap on that one. That's pretty good. It's a, it's a, it's a meme maker, meme maker on our team, extraordinaire, Jerry, saying this is the this is a very same vibe. Very, very same. <laughs> Let's get a side by side of that. Oh man! All right, ladies and gentlemen, ladies, that's it. <laughs> this is my best Kamala impression. <laughs> <laughs> ah, we have too much fun on this program. Uh, somebody who is a barrel of monkeys, somebody who's a lot of fun, uh, a man who does have a, a human face, and I've never seen him make that Kamala Harris expression uh, before, but I have seen him make many expressive comments about how utterly wicked our judicial system and legal system is right now to President Trump and how insane all of these rulings are. A man who can comment on the breaking news. The 
former U.S. attorney for the District of Utah, executive director for Right on Crime, Brett Tolman, joins the program. I'm sorry, I'm sorry Brad. I, I, I didn't mean to like build in that comma. I appreciate you joining the show for breaking news. I can't help myself. We apologize. We make a lot of memes on this show. We try to have a fun time. I know you're not here to talk about beauty, uh, beauty products or anything like that. Uh, but there is some very ugly things going on to Donald Trump. There's this breaking news about the bond and uh, Donald Trump saying he's going to pay that and move on. But like, what, what a world. We went through how um, Bernie Madoff defrauded people for billions and didn't get a bond that high. How Sam Bankman Freed defrauded people for billions and didn't get a bond that high. And here's Donald Trump. How, how else are people supposed to make, uh, what are people supposed to make of this other than this is Marxist political persecution? Yeah, Benny, thanks for having me on. I'll tell you that um, the one of the most liberal courts in the country is the appellate court in New York. So to tell you how bad it is for Letitia James, for mm -hmm. this judge, and the ruling and, and the effort in that case, you have one of the most liberal courts in the land issuing an opinion to that agrees with Donald Trump that that bond is outrageous. Now, I mean, keep in mind, not a lot of people understand, you know, what what this means. That four hundred and fifty plus million dollars that that the judge ordered needed to be paid, a bond would allow you to pay a portion of that. Um, and and Donald Trump could not get any company or anyone willing to take the 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 issue the bond for him to pay. So in in a, in a real sense, it's not whether or not Donald Trump could put up that money. The the reality was that he was being limited. He could not put up that whole amount in cash, nor could he use assets to satisfy it. But what this this ruling does now is it says. Okay, we'll we'll lower this to 175 plus. We're going to give you more time to do it. In addition, we're not going to allow during the appeal Letitia to to try to execute on the assets, meaning she can't go after the assets of Donald Trump while he's appealing. And then the finally, he's allowed to put up assets or the value of his assets in lieu of cash. So this is a game changer for Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. This allows him to maintain the cash that he has to try to battle and fight his legal battles, but it's a big loss for Letitia James and this judge. Yeah. So you, thank you so much for educating us on that because we didn't actually get, through, get a chance to read the ruling since it was happening live during the show. And Donald Trump just commented on it and he sounded very happy about it. And clearly this is, clearly this is why, although I think the, the, the damage has been done. We've been covering some of the larger real estate and financial sector uh, talking heads from New York. None of them MAGA Republicans. None of them. Re I don't think any of them Republicans at all. Right? Like I, That's I don't right. think so. I think most of them Democrats. <laughs> being like, what the f is happening here? You're screwing us. No one wants to invest in Venezuela or China. If you checked into the Chinese stock market because of this. This is going to kill the state, which is already by population, the number one state that people have fled from over the past three years. New York has lost more people per capita than California even has. And so I like a lot of people are screaming about this. Uh, has the damage already been done here, Brett? Yeah, there's, there's substantial damage. And the reason is, is this many, you take a, a business out there and that business is going to go to a bank and say, I need a line of credit. And I'm going to put up the assets of my business as security. That's how I'm going to get this line of credit that's really big. It's a large line of credit. And I'm going to use that and I'm going to expand my business. Now, the banks do more due diligence than Letitia James can or has done in her entire life. They dig into every aspect of that business, all of the spreadsheets. They use law firms that charge $1,500 to $2,000 an hour to dig into Donald Trump. So they do that for an extended period of time and they agree they will loan money to Donald Trump. Now, every business does it in the United States. Every business does it to some extent or another and individuals do that. We say, look, I'll put my home up and I'll get, I'll get a line of credit. And, and, and here's my home, appraise it for me. 
Can you imagine if we had county attorneys and you know U.S. attorneys or any prosecutor that has power that all of a sudden we say this is acceptable? Go after an individual, even though the bank worked way harder to 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 secure its risk, even though the bank is not out any payments, and the bank wants to continue to do business with them. You do that, you will shut down this con- this country. You will shut down business leaders in this country, and then the next step. Our, our mom and pop shops. And then after that, it's individuals with, with HELOCs on their home. It's, uh, it's so educational to have you on the program. It's so, it, because you've been doing this for so long, you're able to really like parse this out and, and, and talk about it in ways that we can understand and we don't consider ourselves experts. And it's really helpful. Could we move down to Georgia where the judge has granted an appeal to Donald Trump there? And can you talk us through what that means now that the judge has granted an appeal of his own decision to sort of split baby justice here and say, well, you're all, you know, <laughs> Fanny Willis, you, you've behaved in a manner that is disreputable to the court and looks like there's a conflict of interest, y- yet you can continue on. Um, don't make no sense to me. Apparently there's gonna be appeal there. Can you handicap that for us? Right. Yeah, two, two, two important moments there. The judge issued this ruling and said, I find that there is compromise, meaning this, D, this DA, Fannie Willis, she, she compromised her ethics at a minimum. I mean, that's what the ruling said. But even though I find that, there's a solution to it, and that's get rid of, of, of Wade. Now, that was the solution, but something interesting happened, Benny. In that opinion, he stated there's not a lot of law in this area. I'm not 100% sure I'm right. I mean, I, I'm paraphrasing, but in essence, in his own opinion, he said, I'm not sure. You do that and you're begging the appellate court to say, okay, we'll take it and we'll look at it. Let the adults back in the room. We'll take a look at it. And that's what's happened. It's embarrassing for the judge, but I think he had to do that. And he threw a bone to Fannie Willis but that's about to come back and haunt him because that that appellate division is not wrapped around this case like that. They're not they're not emotionally tied to it. They haven't issued any rulings. They haven't listened to it. They're going to take the cold hard words on transcripts and they're going to analyze it and they're going to go, "Well, we we don't think this is, you know, a gray area. This looks pretty black and white, and it looks like there's been lying that's occurred on the stand. There's also been compromise ethically, there might also be issues with respect to how she spent the money that she gave to her lover. Now, all of those I'm hopeful and, and we have a better chance with a, with a, you know, a, even, even a, a, even a liberal judge may look at this and say, this is beyond the pale because if it happens here in this case to Trump, we have to send a message. We don't want it happening in, in, in the other cases that may come from this office. And, you know, quite frankly, if you're a prosecutor in Fannie Willis's office right now, you're hoping something happens because you do not want this kind of reputation as a DA's office that does what they want and is above the law. Wow. So you're saying you're saying that there is internal consternation. We've actually seen that with some whistleblower complaints and that's people right. recording Fannie behind the scenes. Never a good, never a great sign uh, when that's <laughs> no. happening. Uh, this seems to be qu- in peril. Yet Fannie Willis is up this weekend saying the train's going to keep on moving and get ready, Donald Trump. I mean, again, can you give us sort of a handicap in your in your professional opinion? What do you think is going to happen here? Yeah. You know, I think that train is going to continue, but at some point it may just be the engine and there's nothing behind her. And and so far she's losing, she's losing a lot of that train and, and it's falling off. And by train, you, you've got support of the community that's frustrated. You have the legal community that is outraged. You have, you have new requests, legal requests for information right now, the, the grandma and, and FOIA requests that are asking for internal documents to find out what was happening. It's only going to get worse for her. I handicap this that this appellate court is going to indicate that this office needs to recuse itself. Mm. Mm. And by that, they're going to push the case either to the attorney general or they do have authority also to push it to another county. Now, Mm. I'm going to tell you, in Georgia, another county is not going to be the same as Fulton County. So it's a great point. We'll 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 see. 
right? We'll see yeah, what happens. Yeah. But I'm doing my I'm doing my very best to come up with a train metaphor here. I, I you know, I love trains. <laughs> I don't think it'd be an engine. I think it'd be a really big caboose. Caboose. That's just, a, that's just a big fanny joke, and I'm above that. Okay, I'm above that. Right. I'm a professional. No power player. can't move on its own. Yep, I'm, I get I'm it. a professional. <laughs> we have we have a family friendly program around here. Final thing. Okay, so here we go. Family friendly program. Let's go to the porn star case. So <laughs> okay. so yeah, <laughs> good job, kids. Keep watching. So. Uh, so here we go. Uh, Alvin Bragg this morning, we learned so much having you on Bragg. I can't help myself. Like if I were on the phone with you, this is exactly the question I'd want to ask. being on with you. Alvin Bragg, Alvin <laughs> yep. Bragg this morning. It makes no sense to me as somebody look reading this case because the FBI, the DOJ, uh, the FEC, they all didn't prosecute yet. Alvin Bragg of all people, like I, you know, a, a guy who is cl like clearly not super competent or efficient at his job or good or could barely even get up the flight of stairs um this guy is gonna like bring this case uh it doesn't make any sense to me because this is a campaign finance law would seem to be uh pre would seem to prevail here maybe i'm wrong like what what's going on yeah the the case is a puzzle and and i'll i'll tell you one thing you have to remember not a lot of people talk about this <clears throat> alvin bragg declined the case already he already reviewed it and indicated that he didn't see sufficient evidence or the law that could support the case. Now, something caused him to flip. At some point, we'll uncover that. If they continue down this path, Trump is, and his lawyers are going to get to the bottom of, of when he used his discretion and did not want to bring the case. But mm -hmm. fast forward and we have a case going forward. You are absolutely correct. Campaign finance law does preempt this area if that's what he was charging. But he's not. What he's really charging is a misrepresentation uh, on his books. That's what he's claiming. He's claiming that there was a misrepresentation. So it, it is a it's a false statement that is that is covered in in you know in in, in all this um, different legal language. What what my father would say that is um, you know <clears throat> whipped cream on horse manure is still horse manure. And that's what this case is. They've wrapped it up to suggest that there's something there. And, and it's, it's not there because what they have is they don't have the evidence. They don't have somebody saying this was an attempt to shut up a, a, a former lover or, or the, you know, the porn star. They, they have no evidence of that. And then they don't also have the misrepresentation that he's claiming. So at some point I expect this thing to fall apart. Wow. I mean, is there anything that's going to get to trial before 2024, November? I think they, they truly believe two things. They would use the law to take down Trump in two ways. One, to tie him up. No ordinary human being could survive all of the legal challenges. And tie, so they'd tie him up and he would not run. And then they would hope to push their best case forward in trial. And that best case they believed was Jack Smith's. Mm. So none of the others did they really care, in my opinion, whether or not it got to trial. They wanted that to be, you know, just death by a thousand cuts, right, to keep him. But they, they underestimated Donald Trump. He, he's not like you and I. He thrives on all of this stuff. There's a wiring problem there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, For he, real. yeah, he, there really is. And then, so they expected Jack Smith to be the one that was going to take him down because they got the friendly court. They've got a friendly jury pool. They've got case that, that sounds good and tough and mean, and it's not working out the way they want it to Man. so far. And the, and the dude's aging in reverse. I think we have the photo of him in court. <laughs> we have the photo of him in court from this morning. I'm like, look at, I mean, look at this Chad. He's such a Chad. Yeah. There you go. Royce. Thumbs it up. I mean, I just, it, it, you know, Again, what am I, what, like, Brett, like, I'm not here to have you comment on beauty or Kamala's face or, or Trump aging in reverse. I know that's not uh, your lane of expertise, but the dude's aging in reverse. I mean, seriously, you know, this is him from this the, morning. And the most important part, Benny, in my opinion, is he's, he's thoughtful. He's thinking about things. He's engaged, it, you know, and, and he looks as a man, regardless of his age, Look, my mother lived until she was, you know, mid eighties. And um, up until the day she died, I would have had her in charge of, of any project because she just mentally was sharp. And, and that's what Trump seems to be. You yeah. contrast that to the, the obvious disadvantage 
disadvantages Kamala Harris had at birth and the, the obvious aging and difficulty of Joe Biden now. And you just say, oh, gosh, can we have somebody that can articulate a thought and a sentence in the White House? That's right. And the uh, polling confirms it. Uh, it's so wonderful when the when the America when the population of this country like sees the very same thing that you and I see and the comment section sees, you know, on, on this program right. and uh, unite and win. Right. And so thank you, obviously, Brett, for ed educating us. It is always deeply educational. It's helpful for our program. Everyone needs to go follow Brett, support his incredible organization, Right on Crime. Obviously, we, we need it now more than ever, Brett. We, uh, yeah. we need it now more than ever. And we need, we need prosecutors to get back to that, you know, that, that position where they don't care the politics. They just want to enforce the law. So. Yes, yes, that's exactly yeah, Thank right. you, Benny. Godspeed, Brett. Thank you. Take care. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got some big time breaking news. We got a new clip of Donald Trump. So tell me this is correct. Yes, we got a brand new clip of Donald Trump talking about the bond and what he's going to do with it and revealing how he's going to pay that uh, in order to obviously stop these Marxists from like seizing his properties. Donald Trump in a very good mood um talking to reporters outside of the court this is happening live right now this just happened while brett was on our program so ladies and gentlemen let's let the president speak let's do something that none of the other networks will do let's actually go to the president and let him speak as to what is happening right now what his decision is here um seems like another big win for trump at least as a silver lining here to this dark cloud this is a case that could have been brought Three and a half years ago, and now they're fighting over days because they want to try and do it during the election. This is election interference. That's all it is. Election interference. And it's a disgrace. will obviously be appealing. But this is a pure case of voter intimidation and election interference. And it shouldn't be allowed to happen. This case could have been brought by the DA, but they didn't want to bring it because they said they have no case. And then they bring it anyway. As you know, D.A. Bragg did not want to bring this case. He was forced into it by, for outside reasons, and it's a disgrace that it can happen. But this was a case that could have been brought three and a half years ago, and they decide to wait now, just during the election, so that I won't be able to campaign. I will be appealing this. On the other decision, uh, it will be my honor to post and we'll post whatever is necessary, whether it be cash or security or bonds. You know, it's a decision we appreciate uh, and respect the appellate division very much. And uh, we will, I think, uh, do very well in that whole thing. We have a judge who I believe is a crooked judge and a crooked attorney general. Absolutely crooked. We did nothing wrong at all, 100%. And that was proven, and everybody there said it was proven. All you have to do is read the legal scholars, and you see that it was proven. But we will continue with that, but we appreciate very much the decision uh, of the appellate division. Thank you very much. What's your collateral for the bond? Cash. If you're elected, will you pardon yourself? So Donald Trump saying, cash, baby. Cash is king. He's going to be paying his bond and then using this opportunity uh, to have a global platform. You know, listen, and these court cases, he's using the court as a campaign background, backdrop. It's wild to see. Donald Trump is using the court as a platform to boost what is ha actually happening to him in America. And the, uh, corporate media can't help but cover it. They won't go live to a MAGA rally. They did all throughout 2016, and look what that got him. So they've tried to learn from that lesson, but they will cover this. And so Donald Trump using these opportunities to speak at the court as like miniature campaign rallies to rail against the evil and corruption inside of the system. And people feel that, ladies and gentlemen, there is a lot of evil out there. Now is the best time to stay strapped or get clapped. Here's our Monday gun day update for you. <laughs> Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, the FBI figures show that crime fell as Americans stocked up on guns in the year 2023, last available uh, data for this. Where Americans bought guns, crime went down precipitously. Isn't that interesting? Isn't it curious, ladies and gentlemen, all this whole like this whole squatter issue that there's there's a few states where there aren't a bunch of squatters coming into houses. Texas is one of them. Florida is one of them. Hot damn. Ooh, give me that clip of the uh, give me that clip of the uh, the Florida sheriff uh, from uh, from shorts talking about uh, home invasions. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it is uh, it is the time for you to protect yourself. And the data now proves it. FBI figures reported by NBC News show that crime fell during 2023, a year which there were over 1 million background checks a month for gun purchases. 1 million a month? Good for you, America. On July 4th, 2023, the Washington Examiner noted that National Instant Crime Background Check System, NICS, checked for gun purchases over a million a month for 47 straight months. So that's 47 million firearms bought. Sometimes I just love my country. There's a lot of doomers out there. Sometimes I just, I just you just got to love living here. 47 million guns. You know, there's only like 300 million Americans. So that's one in four Americans, one in five Americans, like buying out these guns, buying a, at least a gun. Incredible, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> truly remarkable. So according to the FBI, crime plummeted. Former CIA analyst Jeff Asher commented on the low crime figures, saying it suggests that when we get the final data in October, we will have seen likely the largest one year decline in murder ever recorded. Uh, there was a similar situation after the gun surge in 2013. Breitbart pointed out that private gun sales skyrocketed during 2013 with 21 million background checks. And according to the FBI, offenses for the category of violent crimes and property crimes decreased during the first six months of 2014. Because everyone knows that if you effed around, then you bout to find out, especially, ladies and gentlemen, in the state of Florida. This is the this is the the, the clip I wanted. This is the uh, Florida sheriff talking about uh, home invasions. It's like a trend right now. All these squatters going around being like, no, you can just, you know, illegal criminal aliens like being like, yeah, you can just break into people's homes and squat in the homes. And then, then it becomes your house. It's amazing. Right. It's like a video game. Uh, not in red states, maybe in your blue state s hole dumpster fire. Don't want to live there. Don't really care. Like, and you shouldn't live there either. But in red states, this is what happens. Person, we don't know what homeowner, which homeowner shot at him. Um, I guess they think that they did something wrong, which they did not. If somebody's breaking in your house, you're more than welcome to shoot them in Santa Rosa County. We prefer that you do actually. Um, so. Whoever that was, you're not in trouble. Come see us. We have a gun safety class we put on every other Saturday. And if you take that, you'll shoot a lot better and hopefully you'll save the taxpayers money. Ladies and gentlemen, we took a uh, gun safety class, a sniper course with an army ranger who also happens to be uh, one of the executives at our favorite firearm brand, Spikes Tactical the Spikes Tactical AR-15, the preferred firearm of the Johnson household. Spikes Tactical hosted us out on the range and we made the Communist Manifesto go bye-bye. Here's a little clip of that. So a homie just came over with a giant Valentine's bear packed full of Tannerite. We're gonna send that Valentine's bear to Valhalla. Everyone wants to be an American badass, but how can you claim to be an American badass without knowing how to shoot bad guys from really, really far away with a sniper rifle? Come on, you can't. So we traveled to a gun range to get a lesson from a true American badass sniper, Nick Goff, head of product for Spikes Tactical. Nick was deployed 15 times to Iraq, Afghanistan, and other hostile places we're not allowed to talk about. 
nearly eight years in the elite 2nd Ranger Battalion, and six of those as an Army Ranger Sniper. But today we get a chance to learn how to become an American Sniper with one of the best of the best, shooting America's finest steel thanks to Spike Stacked. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it was really fun. The cure for male loneliness? Going to the gun range and putting lead down range. That's the cure, ladies and gentlemen. This like this was it's just it's good for the soul. It's good for the I couldn't encourage it enough. One, you're practicing your Second Amendment rights. If we don't practice our rights, we lose them. Two, it's important to be trained, obviously, on the legal firearms that you own, be a good and responsible legal firearm owner. And then three, find me a person that goes and blows up like a, a teddy bear full of tannerite. And you should see the entire uh, video on, you can watch the entire thing. It's a 10 minute video about everything that we fired and had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, find me somebody who, who blows up a teddy bear with a sniper rifle and like, isn't smiling afterwards. Find me that person. Not possible. You, you like, you, you naturally smile. I know there's tons of, tons of legal, responsible firearm owners in the audience. Like when you, when you, when you're the barrel of the gun is smoking, right. And you're ha like when the barrel of the gun's smoking and you just were like on target and you were just on target, like you when you're done when that, when that, when, when the cycle, the magazine cycle is, is done, you're smiling. You're just naturally like grinning. It is a natural, it is a high. Ladies and gentlemen, it's natural high. It's the high that you feel when you practice your rights, your natural rights. The rights that were given to you by God, given to you by your creator. That is what this country is built upon. Like private property, you know, private property is one of those rights, right? To be able to like work for and keep what you work for. That's intrinsic. That's a natural right. And so we must protect them. And it's it, when you, when you, when you use them, it makes you happy. Because, because God is actually here. God like designed the, this world and it, in its original design was for the, the joy of mankind and as a paradise. And so tap into that, ladies and gentlemen. You can also tap into that with the verse of the day from 2 Samuel, our verse of the day. My God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my savior, you save me from violence. Mm. Mm. Very, very good message for us here. It's important to arm yourselves. It's important to protect yourself and defend yourself and be capable of violence. Jordan Peterson talks a lot about this. To be a man who's capable of violence, but is a peaceful man uh, at base level. Nobody's ever scared of a man who's incapable of violence or a weakling, right? You must be strong. But know this, that there is a strength far beyond anything that we have in our human capacity, and that is God's strength. God is our rock and our refuge and our shield and our salvation. Make God your stronghold this week. We're going to have a hell of a week. So hang on tight, right, to that stronghold. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to support our program uh, more than just watching, if we've uh, touched your heart today with our with our memes, and I think we actually do have the Kamala Harris meme. Uh, I think we did actually put that together. Uh, Rolls Royce, side -side? we got that. No, 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 just the side by side. Oh. Yeah, we got the side by side. Ladies and gentlemen, if if our memes made you laugh, or made you cry, or made you do both, well, please consider joining the Benny Brigade today. The Benny Brigade is obviously. <laughs> More of this, uh, uh, Benny Brigade. You are able to submit questions for the Ask Benny segment every single week. Uh, you're able to submit questions to ask for our guests. You get our free based keychain uh, made here by American leathersmiths and veterans, shipped right to you. Also, check out our store while you're at BennyJohnson.com, and uh, know this: that we're in the fight for you, no matter what. Like. No matter what, we know it's a tough economy out there. Like, and we we totally, really, truly, deeply understand that. Um, we're fighting together. You're not alone. We're happy warriors marching right alongside you, and we're gonna win. We're gonna win. The future looks very bright. It's your boy Benny. 
Thanks for watching. See ya.